This is Formal Lab 1 on balloons and charges. In this experiment, we'll be trying to determine the amount of charge or number of electrons on two charged balloons. In order to do this, it's important to first understand the concepts of transfer of charges, point charges, and electric interactions. Three ways that electrons can be transferred are by conduction, friction, and polarization. Conduction occurs when there's a direct contact between objects that differ in charges. In this lab, we used our positively charged hands to ground the balloons that were negatively charged, so the charges in the balloons become neutralized, which is a use of both conduction and polarization. We use friction to transfer electrons to the balloons by rubbing them on our hair. A point charge is an electric charge concentrated at a specific point, which are represented by two negatively charged balloons. The electric interactions describe that opposite charges, positive and negative, attract, while same charges, negative and negative, or positive and positive, repel. And in our experiment, we show how two negatively charged balloons repel. Our results show that, there, that the more we charge the balloons, the more they repel, thus following our concepts. For our experiments of design, we are testing to see how charged versus uncharged balloons are going to interact, and we're basically testing what we've been learning in class with like charges repelling and opposite charges attracting. So we're testing if we rub more, the balloons will have more charge, and then the further they will repel, and the design may show flaws because of the difficulty to neutralize the charge before each trial. We did two days of trials for the first day. We didn't change any of the variables and just took measurements after rubbing the balloons on our hair 20 times. And on the second day, we changed the number of times we rubbed the balloons on our hair. And this is our data for that. This is our data for uh, us changing the number of times we rub the balloon on our hair. Uh, the math is done by taking the angle which the balloon uh, drifted apart uh, from 90 degrees and use that to find the force that the balloons had on each other and taking that number to find the number of coulombs per balloon and you can use that to find the difference in electrons and protons on each of the balloons. The math is the same for the same number of rubs as the variable rubs, uh, though this time the data points are more consistent with each other because we didn't change any of the variables. For the math, we just found the angle which the balloon made and then use that to find the forces between the different balloons and use that to find the number of coulombs and electrons. These are just our models for our experiment. It was just a basic setup. We had two balloons for each trial hanging off of a ruler off of a desk, and we would just charge them by the amount of rubs we were doing that trial, and we would count see how far apart they would drift. In this experiment, we facilitated the transfer of electrons from our hair to the balloons and allowed them to interact in order to find the charge in one balloon. Because both the hair and the balloons were neutral to begin with, the transfer of electrons actually created an imbalance of charge, commonly known as static electricity. We know that the electrons were transferred from the hair to the balloons and not vice versa, because the rubber that makes up the balloons has a much higher electron affinity than the hair does. This means that the balloons will more readily accept electrons than give them up. As a result, this left the hair positively charged and both balloons negatively charged. Because like charges repel, the balloons repelled from one another for a brief moment in time after they had been charged. The electrostatic force between the electrons of each balloon was responsible for the repulsion. After the initial repulsion, the charges dissipated across the surface of the balloon and the balloons began to move towards a more stable, neutral state. In this experiment, we first tried rubbing the balloons on our hair one after another and then allowing them to interact. However, this did not work because the charge on the first balloon had already dissipated by the time the second balloon held the negative charge. With this method, the balloons were actually attracted to one another due to the first balloon's neutral state. After observing this, we modified our design so that we charged both balloons simultaneously. Once we made the change, the balloons were repelled by one another as we'd expected. The observed repulsion between the balloons supports our claim that both balloons held the same negative charge. Like most experiments, this one was not absolutely perfect. There was many variables that w could not be accounted for, such as there's different charges on uh, other surfaces that are near the balloons, which could attract or repel the balloons. There could also just be some sort of draft or something that pushes or pulls the balloons a certain way that gives it a greater or smaller distance. And we're not sure if we completely neutralized the balloons prior to each trial.